Bye. Hi everyone. I hope you're having a good day. I'm in my studio and I'm trying out my new camera. I hope the mic is better. I'm wearing one now. Um, these are things I've had for years, but they're not the best. So I've kind of shoved them in a drawer for maybe three years or more. And I pulled out the camera and the battery pack doesn't work. But if I plug it in, I can stand here and I can do stuff and I can walk up to the camera and you can see me. You won't believe what happened to the painting I've been working on. If you've been watching my last few videos, you know I'm working on a painting that has gone through evolutions of, well, at the last point that I think you saw it, it was reminiscent of Natural Bridge, which, oh my gosh, the feelings I had just working on it was just, I just got goosebumps thinking about it. It was so great, but it has evolved. So I'm gonna show you that, and then I wanna share with you some tools and some supplies that I've gotten while thrifting. Some interesting things. I think they're pretty cool. So let's go. I am going to show you, like I said I was going to, what happened to that painting I was working on. Are you ready? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Are you ready? Yeah, how about that? And I'm not done. But it's going through an evolution. Or what's that other word? A metamorphosis to become something amazing that I will love so I'm gonna work on that on the next video I decided this one's going to be about tools and not just tools but also found objects when you go thrifting or thrifting <laughs> you know yard sales thrift stores just all kinds of sales sometimes even thrown away or given to you by someone that doesn't need it and is wondering if you would like it. This isn't everything I have. I was starting to pull things out and I'm like, you know what? Gosh, I could go on forever because this is something I love to do and I've been doing it for a long time. So I'll make another one after this. So let's start with what I mentioned in my last video was my, I don't even know if this video has been put up, this is my vintage Bakelite hand mirror. And I'm going to use this in my art room so that I can look back over my shoulder at my artwork to see if it is pleasing to the eye, if it's balanced. Sometimes we get so focused on one spot that we don't realize that the whole thing is not working. So if you look at it through a mirror and you see it's off, it's easier because you're not focused on what you've been doing. It's backwards and it should still look balanced. And what do I mean by balanced? Well, that's a whole other area. So look at this. Beautiful vintage ashtray made in Connecticut, my home state. And I'm not looking at it for smoking. I'm looking at it as a paintbrush holder. Hold on, I think I might have a paintbrush here somewhere. It's so hard to choose. But you're painting, right? Your brush is gross. You can lay it right there. I just love it. There's little rough spots in here if you want to rub the paint off. But I just think it's the ultra cool shape. Isn't it cool? And I can keep it clean. If I get paint on it, I just scrub it off. Then at a flea market, I found this Alcoa tool. I don't even know what it's for. It's got a bent tip and it says Alcoa, which means it's, it's got a wooden handle, you know, Alcoa aluminum. I don't know if anybody knows about Alcoa wrap or Alcoa, Alcoa aluminum these days, but I found this and I just loved it because it said Alcoa. I'm sure I'll figure out some kind of use for it. You can always find scrapers. All right, this one has like a, like a, it's got a patterned edge, you know, so I can take my paintings and I can just scrape. Ooh, I can scrape. You know how I love to scrape. Those are always handy. Then you can find them for like nothing. My mirror costs 10 cents. 
Then there's these two, these guys, right? You probably know this if you've ever taken wallpaper off or put wallpaper up. Oh, a truck just went by pulling a big trailer that looked like our truck, but that can't be our truck. Um, anyway, yeah, these you can get for nothing too. And they are for putting, is it wallpaper? No, no, no. These are for using to put the screen back in your screens in your windows. Um, you know, press it down in there and then they put that little black thing around the edge and you press that in. If you've ever had to replace a screen. That's what these are for. But I thought it was great for making marks. Roll it in the paint, roll it on the, on the canvas. Yeah. Now this is another tool. This is the one for wallpaper. This is the one for smoothing out the wallpaper. But I saw a guy use these. He attached four of them on this long stick and he made these humongous paintings and he was taking the paint and he was just swirling it like this with this big thing. And I found this at a flea market in a box of all kinds of stuff for doing wallpaper. But of course I didn't want everything. So I just said to the guy, um, how much for just the brush? Would you sell me just the brush? A book. I'm like, yeah, I felt like I found a treasure. Oh my gosh. So much fun. I just love the thrill of the hunt. Love it. Of course, we've talked about potato bags and things. Well, this one's been used on my jelly plate so many times that it's really stiff. So now it's just a really good piece of something to put into a painting. Collage. This little box, you might have seen it in my other video, holds my pens and pencils. This I got and it's hand painted. I mean, it's in a little bit of rough shape, but I don't care because I've already gotten paint on it. Little nails holding it together and it's from El Salvador. El Salvador. Hand painted. Handy. Cute, right? I love it. Every time I see it, I smile. Two dollars. Two dollars. Then, of course, you've seen me use these. These are wood carving tools. I got these for a quarter. and I've already made really good use of these. And they have a nice little case and everything. It's really great. What else did I bring over here to show you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is my pointy thing holder. It is a cork and a very heavy candle holder. Stick a cork in it. Stick a cork in it. <laughs> and it holds my pointy things. I've already showed you this once. Yeah, this is vintage too. I just love vintage stuff. I just do. I just love it. Another thing you can do is in thrift stores, you might find um, chipboard boxes like this that might say something like, I love you forever, or, you know, some corny thing on there or some old painted picture or pressed in you know, a something yucky looking. Well, now look at it. I made a dollar for this. So, I mean, this is really, you know, and it's even got the hole to hang it. Of course, I made this this way, but it's very sturdy. And this is something you could paint on, collage on. You could even do uh, encaustic on this. It's nice and wide. So check out the plaques and things. Um, doesn't mean you have to hang it on your wall the way it looks. And you can get a really good bargain. Another one, a dollar. I mean, you know how much you pay for a, a cradled board in the art store? Oh my. Okay, I did find this for, oh, is this a quarter? And I think it might have been a dollar or two, but I loved it. It's just a, it's a blank journal. And I don't even care what kind of paper. It was a two dollars and it's cork on the outside and it's got nothing in it. Nothing's been done to it yet but I will do something with it. And then something for collage. I found this book of old records. Look at the handwriting. <gasps> Look at the little stickers for the pages. And then there's handwriting and the, and the paper, paper is so old and it's graph paper and it's all numbered up in the corner. It's a record of Perry Como songs. How cool is that? Eddie Fisher, Pee Wee Hunt, the Ames Brothers. Look at the numbers up in the corner of the pages and the handwriting is so perfect. I mean, these days, you know, who writes anymore? So this is just something I can use in collage, you know? I mean, the papers are just so cool. Look at the index at the end. I love it. I think this was a dollar. Wow, I really splurged. Now here's something. This is an old wooden box and it's divided. And it's, look, it's got the, what is that called? Tongue and groove or, but just look how perfect. 
look how perfect my Distress Oxide inks fit in this box. And I can see all their names. Now I know you're really supposed to, you know, storm flat. I don't care. They still work and they look so awesome. And when I want to use them, I just bring the whole tray over here. But I leave it sitting out because it's so cool looking. You know, that, the aesthetic has a lot to do with it. Oh my gosh, the things I have. Huh. Amazing. Now, another thing I want to share with you when it comes to inexpensive art supplies, if you find a little boy or girl sitting at a little table, not selling lemonade, but selling crayons by the bag full, 25 cents, let me fill it for you. Some of these crayons are washable, okay? Now, think about it. If a crayon is washable, what does that mean you can do with it? That means you can use water to make it like paint. When I told my granddaughter who's eight, her, her mouth just dropped open. <laughs> she was just amazed. Oh, I loved it. So yeah, look for the um, washable crayons. I mean, even if you buy new washable crayons, you know, we, pay, we spend big money. We spend big money on crayons. These are crayons. They're called Distress Crayons. You can't get a box of these for $1.99. Many, many, many things you can find. Now, I also love having cute things around. So uh, in another video, I'll just show you the cute things that I have. I did show you the ashtray. Oh yeah, one of the things is these kind of cute little dishes, you know, and I use them for watercolor water. Of course, this one's holding markers right now because it's holding markers right now. Enjoy the hunt. It is just so much fun when you just think outside the box. Wait, one more. You're not going to believe this one. Oh, wait, I'm going to have another one after this too. Do you see this? What, we all know what this is, right? It's a magazine rack. I got this because at the art festival on my table, I would put my paintings, my framed ones, my framed uh, originals, that were really just my practice stuff and I was selling them to put them like this so people could flip through. Oh, well, it's a little tight. So now I'm just going to use it right now. I've got some frames sitting in it, but it, look at the color. I mean, you can see where George tried to sand it down so that my stuff would fit, but no. So, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Here's the other thing I want to show you. I got this huge, I mean huge, roll of brown craft paper, but it's super thick. It's super thick craft paper. I have covered more tables with this stuff, and I'm sure there's lots of other things I could do with it. Four dollars. It was where the furniture was being sold. So you just never know. Look everywhere. Look at stuff. You know, rethink it. Especially if you're just putting together your studio. I look around here and I look at the things that I purchased and I'm like, why did I do that? This table I'm working on, I got for nothing and it's heavy. That's why I got it for nothing because the person that owned it got sick of carrying it around. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for being here and I hope you have fun thrifting too. Bye.